Here we have a couple questions um, regarding standing waves. First question says um, that the second low pi lowest pitched string on a standard tuned guitar is the A string, all right, which has a frequency of 110 hertz. So on a certain str uh, guitar, that string has a length of 0.75 meters and a mass of 4.5 grams. The question is, what tension should be um, carried on that string in order for it to resonate at 110 hertz. So let's draw a guitar string. That looks like a guitar, guitar string. Um, and uh, generally, the, um, the frequency that you hear <coughs> is the fundamental, all right? That's the, the strongest um, frequency, the strongest uh, um, resonant frequency. Right? So this is what that looks like. The string would um, oscillate up and down in this way. Um, and we're told that uh, it has a length of 0.75 meters and a mass of 4.5 grams. All right. We're also told that the frequency is 110 hertz. And we can actually use um, the picture to figure out what the wavelength is. All right, Because what we've drawn here is half of a wave, right? half of a standing wave. And this is oscillating up and down. But the other half looks like this. All right, Clearly, it's not actually there. But um, if we were going to look for a full wave, this is what it would look like. All right, which means that um, what's actually oscillating is half of a wavelength, right? L is actually half of the wavelength. So to find the wavelength, I'm going to multiply L by 2. So 2 times 0 0.75 meters, and what I get is 1.5 meters. <clears throat> okay, so um, I can relate the frequency and the wavelength to a wave speed. I can say V equals lambda F. But I can also relate um, the wave speed to the tension in the string, which is exactly what I'm solving for. Um, that equation is that V equals the square root of tension in the string, T sub S, divided by mu. And mu is the um, mass per unit length, all right, which I can actually calculate over here. Mu is... Um, mass divided by length, total mass divided by total length. It's one way to calculate that. Uh, so mass is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. The length is 0.75 meters. And what I get from mu is 0 0.006 uh, kilograms per meter. <clears throat> okay, so now I can set uh, these two equations equal to each other because they're both equations for the wave speed. Right, so lambda times f equals the square root of the spring tension, or sorry, the string tension divided by the mass per unit length. So I can plug in numbers here. It looks like the only thing I don't know is the tension, which is what I'm solving for. So lambda is 1.5 meters. Frequency is 110 hertz. And this is the square root of the tension divided by 0 0.006 kilograms per meter. And I can solve this for the tension in the, in the spring, uh, pardon me, string, and um, what I get is 163 newtons. So the second question here uh, relates to a wind instrument. Okay, so uh, the didgeridoo is an instrument developed by um, the indigenous people of Northern Australia. It is generally a hollow tube uh, between one and three meters, and it's played like a trumpet. Okay, that's important. <clears throat> so a specific didgeridoo has a length of 1.2 meters, and we want to know what is its fundamental frequency, and also what is the frequency of the third resonant frequency above the fundamental. Okay, so let's draw, uh, let's draw a tube. And this tube has a length L. 
and um, we're told that a didgeridoo is played like a trumpet, right? which means that one end is open and the other end is closed. All right? Specifically, it's closed by the, um, the mouth of the player. All right? And what that means is that the open end always acts like a node. Okay? Sound is a pressure wave and the pressure at this opening will always be atmospheric. So this is a fixed pressure. The closed end, however, always acts like an anti-node. So we'll draw um, an anti-node here and you'll see that um, come together in a second. Um, in this case, the, the mouth of the player is causing um, high and low pressure alternatingly, and that's what causes this uh, anti-node here. So if we wanted to know um, Let's, let's sketch out maybe the fundamental. So this is the fundamental um, frequency and wavelength. We're going to sketch the wavelength because that's what we can see in space. Um, and the, the lowest frequency or the uh, longest wavelength simply connects these two in this way. All right, and what we've drawn here is one quarter of a total wave, right? We have a node to an antinode. You could imagine going uh, to the, the next node over here, and that would be half of a wave, right? And you need another whole uh, uh, node to antinode to node again to, to have a whole wave. So what we have in total here is that the wavelength is four times the length. All right, so let's imagine the next couple of these just so we can see what the trend is. Uh, so we'll draw our didgeridoo again, and this will be the first harmonic. All right, and again, the open end has to act like a node, and the closed end has to act like an anti-node. Now we're going to develop one node in here. Um, and if you sketch this a few times, you'll see that it needs to be about here. All right, if we connect this, this is kind of what this looks like. It's not the prettiest sketch in the world, but I think you can see what's going on. Um, so what we have in here is three quarters of a of a wave, right? So if I divide this into three parts, um, I would need four of them, four of those little thirds, to make a whole wave. So what you'll see is that the wavelength here is four thirds times L. <clears throat> All right, let's do maybe one or two more. All right, so for the second uh, harmonic above the fundamental, <coughs> we're still going to have a closed, uh, uh, open and closed on the two ends. All right, so we have a node on this side, an anti-node on this side. And uh, we're going to, to build a, another node in between the ends, right? So we had one here, and we're going to have two. And... Uh, Looks like it should be about here. All right, so we now have a full wave inside of our tube, all right, or a full wavelength in here. It was it was a standing wave for all three of these, um, but here we have a full wavelength inside of the tube. So this is the first one where the wavelength is actually going to be smaller than the length of the tube. Right? If we divide this into five bits, so one, two, three, four, five, only four of them are a full wave. Right? So what we have is 4L over 5. All right, and let's do one more because we're asked for the, um, the third resonant frequency. And once you do this once, um, we can come up with an equation. You don't ever have to do it again. So... Uh, antinode here and a node here, and now I need uh, three nodes in between, right? I had zero, one, two, now I need three. So if we try to guess here, that doesn't look horrible. So now I would want to break this into seven bits, all right? I have um, a half of a wave here, or half of a, it's a half of a half of a wave, right? 
and then um, two halves here, two halves here, two halves here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equal bits, right? And I only need four of them to make a whole wave. So lambda equals 4L over 7. All right, so if you see what's happening here, I have four, four thirds, four fifths, four sevenths. And in general, uh, lambda is 4L over M, where M is 1, 3, 5, and so forth. All right, only the odd numbers. Okay, and this leads to the um, characteristic harmonics that you get for open-closed uh, instruments like trumpets or uh, any brass instrument. Um, so if we're just looking for the fundamental, uh, we already found it, right? Uh, the wavelength is 4L, so we'll say uh, lambda, we'll say fund for fundamental. The fundamental uh, wavelength is 4L, which is 4 times 1.2, right? 1.2 meters, which is uh, 4.8 meters. All right. We're not looking for lambda, we're looking for frequency, and we relate those things by uh, the wave speed, which is given to us here. So F fundamental looks like V over lambda fundamental, and what we have is 343 meters per second divided by 4.8 meters, and that is um, 71.5 hertz. Alright, so that's the fundamental frequency. It's pretty low, but this is a very long instrument. Um, so then the next thing we're asked for is what is the third harmonic above the fundamental, right? So the fundamental is this one. Here's the first harmonic, the second harmonic. This is the third harmonic. So it's the one that has a seven in it, right? And the reason I'm pointing that out is if you look at the M's, um, we're not looking at the third M. We're actually looking at the fourth M because this is the third one above the first one. Um, does that make sense? So it's like we're starting from zero, but you can't put m equals zero. Um, so we have a, a lambda for that. Uh, it would be 4L over 7. All right, and if you do that math, that's 4 sevenths times uh, 1.2 meters, or 0 0.6857 meters. And finally, the frequency, this is the third harmonic frequency, it's uh, V divided by that lambda. So that's 343 meters per second divided by point, uh, 0.6857. And what you get is very close to 500 hertz, which is closer to something you'd actually hear. So when you play a didgeridoo, because uh, everyone has played a didgeridoo, right? Um, you're generally not um, not exciting the fundamental because that's pretty low and it's hard for people to hear. So you're generally exciting uh, some of the higher frequencies.